Well, Jazeera's senior political analyst Marwan Bishara is live with us here. Marwan, let's break down what's happened and putting it into context. On November the 16th, 2023, 34 UN experts referred to what they called crimes committed today partly due to continued impunity. Does the provisional ICJ rule bring an end to this era of impunity that the experts are talking about? Well, theoretically speaking, yes. Uh, in principle, yes. Uh, whether Israel will, uh, will abide by it remains to be seen. It doesn't seem to me that the Israeli leaders in particular, but also the Israeli elite in general, the political elite and the military brass, will be taking a lot of this on board for the simple reason. They called it Haig Shmeig, didn't they? The, the Ben Gavir. Ben Gavir did. But I'll tell you something. I think uh, a lot of these Israeli leaders, when they were uttering these things, and we were like, we were, you know, rolling our eyes. What the hell are they doing? They're giving us am ammunition that they're actually complicit in, in genocide. But they're used to this kind of rhetoric. That's what, that's how they speak in Israel. There's a certain degree of racism and dehumanization and populism among the political elite, but also in the society, after 56 years of occupation, right. they didn't even notice that they're being so racist about it. All right, since we're talking about rhetoric, let's listen in to what the court said in announcing the adoption of these provisional measures. On 9 October 2023, Mr. Yoav Gallant, Defense Minister of Israel, announced that he had ordered a complete siege of Gaza City and there then that there would be no electricity, no food, no fuel, and that everything was closed. On 12 October 2023, Mr. Isaac Herzog, President of Israel, stated, referring to Gaza, I quote, we are working, operating militarily according to rules of international law, unequivocally. It is an entire nation out there that is responsible. It is not true, this rhetoric about civilians not aware, not involved. It is absolutely not true. The court notes that the military operation being conducted by Israel following the attack of 7 October 2023 has resulted in a large number of deaths and injuries, as well as massive destruction of homes, the forcible displacement of the vast majority of the population, and extensive damage to civilian infrastructure. In the court's view, the aforementioned facts and circumstances are sufficient to conclude that at least some of the rights claimed by South Africa and for which it is seeking protection are plausible. This is the case with respect to the right of Palestinians in Gaza to be protected from acts of genocide. Now, Marwan, listening to what was said there, of course, this is not the final finding on whether or not genocide occurred, but the president of the court went through what's happening to civilians, what Israeli officials have been saying, basically said that South Africa's case, genocide case, is plausible, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a landmark ruling uh, simply because of the, the arguments that was stated for 36 minutes, which is almost identical to the South African arguments, which is also almost identical to what the Palestinians have been saying for over four months. Basically, that Israel is not only genocidal in intent, it's genocidal in practice. Mm. And the Palestinian people are in danger of continued genocide. What the, what, what, the, what, the, what the president of the court said, that they have been going through and that they will be going through in the future mm. of more of the same, unless Israel takes a number of steps that it must take. That's why this is a very important mm. uh, ruling. Israel today is on trial, officially, for genocide. Now, what you just said, though, when you listen to what very significant Western world leaders have been saying, you do feel there is a very obvious gap between where the ICJ is and where some of the world powers are. Let's listen into what John Kirby had to say on January the 4th. We find this uh, submission meritless, counterproductive, and uh, completely without any basis in fact whatsoever. 
Did we just basically hear the president of the World Court refute that statement that it's counter, uh, meritless and completely without any basis in fact? That's not the impression you get from the ICJ. If you remember back, back then, we said what Kirby himself was saying was meritless, lacking in diplomacy and lacking in base. It was baseless, what he was saying, what Kirby was saying. And, as you said, the, the court of the land, the world's court, have proved everything Kirby have been saying, not just these three words, everything Kirby has been saying in justifying Israel's genocide the past three months were wrong. And that's why I think this type of delusion, because American Biden administration has proven to be delusional when it comes to what Israel has been doing, and its attempt at shielding Israel diplomatically has also proven to be counterproductive. Now that the world court have come out with its ruling, the United States and other Western backers of Israel's genocide must cease and desist. And they this, must. this is what some international human rights groups have been calling for, like Human Rights Watch in a statement of November the 6th, have been warning that, and it went actually mentioned, the US, the UK, Canada and Germany might be, end up being complicit in abuses, right? Now we're, we're seeing this movement towards that in the ICJ. Um, it's, it contrasts also, does it not, Marwan, with the rhetoric we heard from Western leaders during the Ukraine war. Let's turn back a year ago and listen in to what some of those leaders were saying. Russian forces also opened fire on 10 civilians uh, who were waiting in line uh, for bread. These incidents uh, join a long list of attacks on civilian, not military locations across Ukraine, including apartment buildings, public squares, and last week, a maternity hospital in Mariupol. Uh, I doubt that any of us who saw those images will ever forget them. Yesterday, President Biden said that, in his opinion, war crimes have been committed in Ukraine. Personally, I agree. Yesterday, we saw again Russia's targeted attacks against civilian infrastructure. And this is marking a new chapter in an already very cruel war. The international order is very clear. These are war crimes. Targeted attacks on civilian infrastructure with a clear aim to cut off men, women, children of water, electricity and heating with the winter coming, these are acts of pure terror. It's amazing that, that some of the same language was used in those statements talking about targeting civilian infrastructure, water, electricity, being cut from men, women and children, were some of the same references that the president of the ICJ explained in why they've come to their position. And yet, it took South Africa, Marwan. How significant is that? Not a major Western power that talks about human rights. It took a non-Western power to bring this case and notice these references to the ICJ. Well, directly to your question, I think today, in the world we live in, it's South Africa that's the champion of international human rights and humanitarian law. Now, the self-declared Western powers that are uh, the, the champions of of the humanitarian in our world. But back, I mean, you know, back then we laughed and I'm still laughing now. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. You cannot make this stuff up. The hypocrisy, the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy of Western leaders, especially Van Dalen, I mean, and the Biden administration. There's two things here and we need to differentiate between them. There's the hypocrisy and there's the double standard. The hypocrisy is because the Europeans and especially the EU in general and the US has been saying that they and their values are universal values. And everything about their position on the question of Gaza proves to be utterly hypocrit hypocritical. And the second is the double standard. They say something about the Ukraine because Russia is an enemy. They say something else about Gaza because Israel is an ally. That's the definition of double standard. So it is laughable, laughable how the EU leaders and the US leaders have taken the position 
both hypocritical and double standard when it comes to the question of Gaza. And now it caught up with them because the world court has proven them to be hypocritical. All right. Thanks so much, Marwan Bashara, for coming in.